Welcome once again to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Now we are going to be talking about the National Association of Resident Doctors that have decided to call off their strike, which lasted for about 64 days. We're speaking this morning with the president, Dr. Godia Ishaya, who's the president of the National Association of Resident Doctors. Good morning, Dr. Ishaya. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, sir. Great to have you on the program. Let's start with um, recent events. It's announced that you have called off the strike or suspended the strike. Can you share with us why exactly that is? Well, thank you very much for having me again. We, uh, we, we met uh, on Sunday, the 3rd of October, and uh, celebrate and reappraise the issues that led us to go on strike on the 2nd of August 2021. Well, having reappraised the progress that was made from both uh, the federal and the state government, and particularly not in the posture of government and some of the commitments that they met. It, uh, w the next, the emergency next resolve that uh, we should suspend the strike because some of the items in our demands were submitted because of the ongoing strike and also the invocation of the Article 43 of the Threat Dispute Act by the federal government. So we uh, resolved that we should uh, suspend the strike for a period of six weeks so that we can give uh, the government time to implement some of those things that we were at settlement with them. Okay, uh, before we go into details, because I know I've, I've gotten um, a release that, uh, that was put out by the NARD, um, I want you to first, you know, talk about what the effect of the strike has been in the last, you know, two months. Um, how much has it affected healthcare delivery in Nigeria? Well, uh, the strike have uh, been very, were very effective, um, and it was able to force most of this commitment that we have gotten. We actually regret that we have to go on strike to be able to force the government to do some of these things that they could actually do it without uh, letting us to embark on any strike action. Um, when we embark on the strike action, the government adopted a posture of not wanting to meet with us, and uh, we were taken to the National Industrial Court so that's told most of the deliberation, or rather engagement that we were supposed to have with the government. So with uh, the recent posture of the government of uh, wanting to come back to the negotiating table and uh, implementing some of those demands that we uh, went on the strike for, we felt it was uh, good for us to resume and start rendering services to those Nigerians who cannot afford to, to go abroad for medical tourism or that cannot afford the bills of uh, private uh, hospitals. So that was uh, the uh, most of the reasons that we have to uh, suspend this our strike. All right. I also speak now on um, some clarity with the, the moves that the government has made so far. Uh, that made the NARD think it was fine that they, of course, suspend the strike. Uh, what steps has the government currently taken? The, the move that was uh, initiated upon the government side that made us suspend the strike was this, that, um, you know, the, just as I mentioned earlier, they revoked the Article 43 of the Trade Dispute Act and said they were not going to pay us uh, even the medical residency training who was uh, uh, asking the government to pay. And some of the 
uh, positions of the government uh, before before this payment was made was 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 not the one that we could easily trust them with. Uh, because uh, the the medical residency training count, uh, areas areas rather was captured uh, under service wide vote, yes. and we were not comfortable with the fact that it was under service wide vote because service wide vote is non is nobody's uh, uh, budget. So um, they said that they weren't going to pay us until we return back to work. And that was clearly a position that can be uh, anybody can suspect. First, you have captured the medical residency fund into a service-wide port, which is no, uh, no, uh, we can't cl uh, lay claim us on it. And then you are saying you will not pay us until we resume back to work. So it was a very suspicious move. And the government maintained that position and also maintained that they were not going to pay us our salary. But with recent engagement, the government was able to commit and start paying the medical residency fund. And they were we open to discussion on the withhold salary. So we felt uh, with this one, with other issues that will actually require that we, are, we should go back to work before uh, the payment will be effected. We put everything together and reappraised all the issues, and we felt that we should give the government uh, six weeks to, uh, to, 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 to implement those uh, provisions that, uh, that uh, we, we, we recently agreed with, oh. with them. Now, I want you to share, um, you know, clarify exactly the challenge with the, uh, is it GIFMIS now, GIFMIS um, and IPPIS. Um, what, what is the challenge that the NARD has with uh, uh, the payment platform GIFMIS? Well, that's uh, the other part I was telling you that we had a cell met on, that uh, we view it that we had to give some window to see the implementation. You know, they were, uh, this, uh, our resident doctors who were hit at two on this platform. Yeah. Most of them have been captured on the IPPIS platform. But they need to be paid at least a month's salary on the IPPIS platform before their areas will be pushed into their account. And we realized that the government have adopted the position that they will not pay us because we are on strike. So we got to a position where we were at Telmet. So we now resolved that, okay, within these six weeks, the government would have been able to pay them at least a month's salary and into their account and then push uh, the, the, the areas uh, subsequently. So that was uh, the position we felt uh, would be would be fair and uh, good for for both parties. Okay, and and is there um, some level of trust that the NARD has with the government? Because it's not the first time that a strike has been suspended, um, only for the NARD to once again go back on strike after the government failed. Uh, to, of course, fulfill the uh, promises that were made. So why does the NARD feel different this time? We haven't felt any different, but uh, we saw some commitment that were palpable. And just as I said, the posture will uh, change. So we want to see if we can do a tete a tete with the government and see that they continue to move in the right direction while we still uh, give them the benefit of the doubt that they will uh, follow through to their promises. Okay. Are, are there still discussions on um, hazard allowances and in incrementing some of those figures? The, the hazard allowances have been under discussion. 
my association uh, is being led by the Nigerian Medical Association. And the other health workers are being led by the Joint Health uh, uh, Union. So um, the discussion has largely been uh, that both parties have agreed that the, uh, uh, the hazard allowance needs to, need to be improved upon. And we had a, a lot of discussion. The, the agreement was largely between uh, the joint health sector who, who wanted a flat rate hazard allowance to be paid, while our association, led by the Nigerian Medical Association, wanted uh, that... Uh, uh, the percentage of our best salary be used as a basis for payment for the uh, hazard allowances. So the discussion is still going on. It's just that uh, the discussion is going on in a, uh, in a very slow, slow pace. And uh, we uh, are call, call on the government and still encourage the government to uh expedite uh, action on that so that uh, the discussion will will be more frequent uh, and we eventually reach uh, agreement on the position on how the hazard allowance should be paid okay I, I also want you to share on something because uh, from the a communicator was issued. It says here the NEC noted the non-resolution of the of the following perennial issues. It says non-payment of salary arrears or short salary shortfalls of 2014 to 2016 to her members, despite several engagements with the federal government. Is there a likelihood that uh, the 2014 to 20, uh, 2016 shortfalls will be paid? Um, the government position on that was that uh, they want all the health, uh, the union within the health sector to be treated as one. Because all, all, all of uh, the health sector's um, union, uh, the government is owing them some amount regarding uh, that 2014, 2015, 2016. So um, we had a uh, discussion and it was agreed that it has been, it, uh, it has been captured. So um, it was rem uh, for the head of finance, it was a uh, minister of finance rider to activate processes of uh, getting that money paid to all uh, the unions, including our our union. Okay, I'm 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 just going to keep pointing out some of the the things that uh, have not been uh, resolved yet. Uh, there's also um, uh, a challenge with the uh, de uh, delay in rather in the payment of death in service insurance benefits to next of kins of uh, the fallen doctors or the doctors who lost their lives. Um, while in service, and that also includes uh, COVID-19 inducement allowances. Um, you know, is this, these discussion, uh, discussions are still ongoing? Yes, the discussions are ongoing. For instance, the debt in service uh, benefit. We uh, discovered that uh, so, some nets of skin to those uh, our diseased colleagues have not activated the processes from their uh, from their hospitals. So, but those who have actually activated and completed, it was uh, some of them were paid, and uh, we agreed on the fact that we will ensure that those processes will be activated from uh, the hospitals and then we'll, we'll follow it up uh, with the government to ensure that uh, the debt and service benefits have been paid to the next of kin. Uh, Dr. Ashaya, can you, can you, if possible, c uh, clarify with Nigerians um, how much exactly um, gets to um, the, the, the next of kin? 
Sorry, I can't get, I didn't get that, sir. I'm asking if you can clarify uh, with us, if possible, um, what the amount that goes to the next of kin is. How much is it? Hello? Can you hear us, Dr. Ishaya? No, I cannot get you here. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. I'm asking if you can clarify, if possible, how much exactly is paid to next of kin of doctors uh, that die in service? Oh, my dear. I can't get that. Okay. Uh, let, let's uh, talk about something else. I'm, I'm guessing we'll come back to that. Um, before we come back to that, uh, tell us a little bit more about uh, the um, brain drain um, that is happening across the Nigerian health sector. In the time that the doctors have been on strike, are there members of the NARD that have left Nigeria? Dr. Shaya, can you hear us? Hello? Can you hear me clearly? Yeah, I can hear you now. I'm asking that you speak a little bit about the brain drain and doctors leaving Nigeria to work in other countries. In the period that um, you've been on strike, have there been many more doctors leaving? Yes. Uh, uh, many, many more of our colleagues have uh, left the shore of this country to other countries uh, where they feel yeah, they will be better taken care of. So there are a lot of uh, factors that have is causing a lot of this uh, our colleagues to to want to um, go to other countries where they feel their their life will be better off. Um, you. If you look at part of this, our demands, what we are trying to fight is actually these factors that is pushing them away. You can, you don't expect that uh, a health worker or a doctor is working in an environment whereby he has got paid for like uh, 20 months, uh, uh, 10 months or, or 4 months as it is. This Doctors and health workers are just like any other human beings that will want to see that their 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 progress economically and as well academically. So you can see where 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 when you have an offer from a particular part of the world that is better than what you have within your country, you would definitely want to accept that offer. The security situation in the country also, the education sector is another thing. So a lot of this factor, when the opportunity presents themselves, uh, you see that uh, people are... Uh, our colleagues are accepting those offers and and leaving the shore of this country. So our, our, our association will continue to fight for our colleagues, continue to fight for the improvement of uh, the welfare of our, of our colleagues, and as, uh, eventually it will be to the benefit of the whole Nigerian citizen and Nigerian masses. Because if we don't do that, the brain drain will keep on uh, going on and we will end up not having people to even train younger ones to man the health sector. So uh, the brain drain is not only affecting the service, but it will also affect the training of uh, younger ones coming up. So this is uh, a cause that our association is championing and in order to keep the health workers, the brightest health workers within the country. Uh, also share your thoughts on the, the challenges on, at the state level, because it's not just a federal government problem now. There are certain state governments that have also failed to pay doctors, I believe. Um, how is that also being addressed? Yeah, we, we really appreciate the efforts of some state governments. Like you said, like uh, Delta State, they have uh, been paying even better than the federal uh, facilities uh, within uh, within the state. 
they said like Borno, also they paid uh, training allowances to their doctors and are also paying very good uh, remuneration. We have also said like Benway who have adopted and implemented uh, the Medical Residency Training Act and they are working hard to implement the med Medical Residency uh, Fund. So we call on other states who are yet to do that to uh, come and join those states in doing uh, the good work they are doing so that uh, together we can stem the tide of uh, brain children from our country and keep our brightest mind uh, in, in, in the country to continue to take care of us. All right. I, I think I can throw in about two final questions. I want to go back to a question that I asked before. If you can hear me now, um, I, want, I want you to speak on what the um, next of kin uh, allowance is. Um, what are the figures like? Well, I'm not... Uh, it depends on the grade level of the particular uh, persons involved. And uh, uh, it depends on the grade level that the disease was uh, in before, before, before the time of demise. So that, that will determine the amount to, to be given to the next of kin. It's, 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 it's a varied amount. It has not fixed amount for, for, for all of uh, the, 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 the people involved. Yeah. Can, you, can you share with us you know, an, you know, any figure for the, the doctor on the highest grade level? What does the next of kin get when that doctor passes in service? Okay, the figures, the number of people who have died. No, no, no not the number. Dr. Shaya, this is what I'm trying to yes. do. I'm, this is what I'm trying to get Nigerians to understand. When we lose a doctor in service, either because of COVID-19 or because of, you know, occupational hazards, what exactly does the family get to benefit? Um, and that's some of the conversations that we're having this morning, um, or, and you are also having with the government. So I'm trying to create a picture here. Is it up to a million naira that the next of kin gets for a doctor that dies in service, the highest level, you know, um, of, um, uh, um, of a doctor? Um, is it up to two million naira? Is it a hundred thousand? That's what I'm trying to get here. Can can you share with us any figure? Yeah, that that is why I told you that it depends on the grade level of the colleague that died. Yeah. So 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 a doctor on the highest grade. Hello? All right. Um, Dr. Ishaya, what happens after six weeks if the government fails to um, fulfill its promises? Uh, well, after six weeks, uh, if the government fails to fulfill the promises or well, we didn't see a meaningful progress on what uh, we agree with the government, we are going to revert back to our neck, and the neck, the neck will take the appropriate decision and will communicate it to Nanjene. Okay. All right. Um, Dr. Goria Ishaya, uh, would like to speak with you again as quickly as possible. Um, I, I'm not sure why, you know, you either, you know, just conveniently didn't hear or answer that particular question. Um, on next of kin allowances and what they should be. But we'd like to speak with you again as uh, soon as possible, uh, hopefully before the end of the next six weeks or beyond. But uh, um, thanks for joining us this morning, and we wish you a very uh, beautiful week ahead. Thank you very much. Absolutely. All right, and I think that's where we will be wrapping it up this morning. A lot of times these conversations come up, you know, and I remember that we've also had similar conversations in the past to try and understand what figures are um, when doctors are making these demands. Okay, it's 5,000 naira. We are currently receiving as hazard allowance. What would you like to receive? Somehow, some way, you know, there's just never a figure put out. Um, and pretty much the same thing. And that's the reason that question kept, uh, kept coming back. Um, what exactly do next of kin um, of uh, doctors receive when they pass in service? 
um, if you know a doctor dies as you know a result of COVID-19 infection or some other reason while he's in service, what is his family expected to get? Is it a hundred thousand, five hundred thousand? Is it a million naira, five million maybe? Um, because I know we've had similar conversations like this, um, you know, on Nigerian policemen, um, and you know how much their families get if they die in service. Policemen have complained bitterly about uh, families being kicked out of their, you know, their their police uh, quarters after the, the man dies in service and numerous things like that. Uh, but somehow, some way, you know, we just never get those figures when we ask. But thank you anyway for being a part of the program this morning. Once again, apologies for not being able to have the conversation on zoning. We would have to reschedule that. Um, I wish you a very interesting Tuesday ahead. If you missed out on any of the discussions this morning from off the press to today in history, remember where to catch up. It's simply at Plus TV Africa on Facebook and Instagram. Same with our uh, YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. Do subscribe. I am Osao Gie Ogbawa. Have a great Tuesday.